Thank you. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. Glory to his name. Indeed, he is worthy. He is sovereign. He is Lord. He is God. He died and rose again. And we're here to celebrate him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me thank you for being here today on this first Sunday. God has kept us. God has brought us. I've seen brethren from near and far. And we thank God for you. I've seen those who I'm seeing for the first time since the pandemic. I want to thank God for you, that he has kept you. Amen. He has preserved you. Amen. And you still have a mind uh, to be in the house of God. All the way from Brooklyn. Amen. Sister Candace. And I want to thank God for her. And, of course, we have the, uh, uh, the Russells who have been driving in from Connecticut and have been just so faithful and just so grateful uh, for each one. Amen. We're here to fellowship around the Lord's table. And let us prepare our hearts to approach the table by turning our songbook or looking at the screen as we sing the song of consecration. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Stand with me, please.
Lord, we believe you have heard our petition as we sang. Lord, take it all and make us all that you will have us to be. You gave your all. Lord, you said to us, we should do this in remembrance of you, that we should come together and remember your sacrificial death, you giving of yourself completely that we might be saved completely. As we remember your sacrifice, help us to recommit to live sacrificially, to resist the world, sin, and the devil. And we pray, God, that as we come together to partake, that our faith will be refreshed, that our faith will be renewed, our faith will be revived even. Lord, let it be so. I pray, Lord, that you'll stretch out your hands right now, that you will cover your sons, your daughters, your children, that as we come to partake, there will be nothing in us that be worth condemnation. Lord, we commit everything to you now. Cover us under your blood so that this table will be a table of blessing. We ask this now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O Holy Ghost, revival comes from Revival comes from thee. Send the revival. Start. Start the word in me. Thy word declare. I praise thee, Lord. I praise thee, Lord. For cleansing me. Yes, God. I praise thee. I praise thee. I praise thee. Fulfill thy word. a moment to greet one another we come to fellowship around the lord's table and one with another amen so we're going to take a moment to uh just affirm our love to one another amen let's take time to do that jesus jesus everywhere i go everywhere i be he hasn't given up on me. I am his and he is mine. Thank God. Ah, oh, thank God, thank God. You're protected, you're covered. God got you. God got you. God got you. I stand here this morning 
to introduce and present the speaker. Because of COVID, we've been doing church differently in so many ways. And so this morning, we're going to invite uh, Bishop Earl McKay. To come <laughs> via video with a message entitled Divine Prescriptions. Do you need a prescription right now? Is there something for which you need a prescription? God got a prescription for you, for us. Sermon taken from 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8. In verse 9. Please receive Bishop Earl McKay coming with us. Uh, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. And I know you're praying for me. It reads, And it was so... When Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? <clears throat> Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And so he came with the horse and chariot and stood before Elijah. Verse 10, and Elijah sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times, verse 10, and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Verse 10 again, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. I'd like to speak on the thought this morning, Divine prescriptions. Divine prescriptions. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Pray with me, please. Father, <coughs> thank you for this hour. We pray your help. Send your spirit. Quicken both preacher and people. Let your voice be heard and let your work, word do its work. We ask this morning in Jesus name. Amen. The genius of the scriptures, the genius of the Bible is that it addresses real human maladies and conditions. It deals with raw realities. Most importantly, the Bible deals with the underlying causes and realities of the human condition and state. The condition is global, universal, affecting all creation and all human beings in particular, the reality according to the wise man Solomon is that no one is exempt from the fall. The rich, the poor, the wise, the foolish, the high born, the low born, the prince and the pauper. We are all affected by the fall and the failure and the maladies of our humanity. Solomon says it's vanity. It's unfair. 
We read the news report every day. We watch various channels and we see the effect. We see the damage of the fall and the failure. The genius of the Bible, li genius of the Bible lies also in the fact that, that it provides the solution. The prescriptions for the malady or maladies of mankind. I wish to submit to you this morning that God can and will fix anything no matter how unfixable it may appear to be if only we take and follow his prescriptions. God can fix God can undo, God can make right anything that seem impossible if only we will follow his prescriptions. Let's, let's examine our text and its context. It, the text and its context is about Naaman. The story of Naaman shows us how God can deliver and save. If we follow his prescription. The Bible tells us that Naaman. The captain of the king of the host in Syria. Was a great man with his master. He was honorable. Because the Lord had given him deliverance. Given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. He was influential. He was well positioned. He was a man of power and authority. He was a man well favored. But the Bible says he was a leper. He had the king's ear. He was in an elevated position. Life was good for him. But he was a leper. It's amazing no matter how good things are going. There are always underlying issues. To somehow spoil the joys of life. That is the reality of life. Solomon the wise man says even in joy there is sorrow. And he says, in much wisdom, there is much sorrow. When you know a lot, it means you know the underbelly of life as well. In the midst of the good, you are aware of the bad. That's why he being a wise man could not really enjoy life because he, know, he knew the realities of life. He was a leper. Now, the significance of leprosy in the Bible is this. We understand from modern science that leprosy was a blood disease. Uh, it, it starts in the bloodstream. And it affects the skin. It manifests outwardly even though it starts inwardly the skin deteriorates and there are several types or forms of leprosy but we understand from the bible that lepers were unclean and had to be isolated had to live outside the walls so socially it isolates no matter how rich High born one is. Leprosy has a way of separating one. Leprosy, we understand in Bible times, was uncurable by man. It had no cure. Leprosy was a, a, a condition that no man could heal. That's true leprosy, you see. Leprosy, like sin, begins within and manifests itself without leprosy 
we understand for the most part was not painful because certain forms and there were certain many forms but certain forms of leprosy kills the nerve ending so that one was not able to feel exactly what was happening as it as it kills the nerve endings and the muscles we find that deformities take place the fingers begin to stiffen or, or the legs and and so the, the, it has a crippling effect as a matter of fact limbs will will fall off it will atrophy as a matter of fact when one is not able to feel they're able to hurt themselves and don't even know can step on hot cold and and lose part of their limb because they can't feel that's the way sin does it it makes us numb to certain things yes leprosy caused the body to waste away life to waste away without even knowing it lepers are often considered dead to the family they're dead they're isolated separated from family from society but we understand from our text that leprosy like sin is no respect of person Naaman at the ear of the king he was a great general he possibly was wealthy but he was stricken by leprosy it's amazing how stark the bible puts it that he was high positioned he was influenced but then it's just talking there that but he was a leper i think this speaks to the human condition no matter how station or standing in life sin on the minds sin separates sin affects us in ways that nobody can cure but god we see from our text that God cares about us no matter what the situation and God always provide a solution the Bible said in the midst of Naaman's household was a servant girl that they had taken back captive when they raided Israel she was in the household she saw the condition and she made a statement if my master were in Israel, certainly the prophet of God would be able to heal him. That struck a chord. That gave Naaman hope. And so he sent word to the king that he has a possible solution to his situation. Uh, the king arranged a, a diplomatic entourage wrote a letter of commendation Naaman took a band with him gold silver clothing headed to Israel at an audience with the king read the letter the letter is stated here in the passage and it says to the effect that I send Naaman and when you receive this letter of recommendation receive him and I want you to heal make him clean and when the king received the letter he wondered what is this am I God can I kill and make alive I know what this is it's a setup he's setting me up for an invasion he wants war he rented his clothes because he was frustrated he realized he had no uh, solution he 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 was beside himself elisha heard elisha said send him over here 
Uh, it's amazing how, how, how this happened. The word was the prophet in Israel. But Naaman and the king, they're thinking differently. They're thinking diplomatically. They're thinking on another level. They're not thinking spiritually. Don't you know that happened to us sometimes? God provides a way out. But our presupposition, the way we look at things, even though God speaks clearly, we're looking for the answer in another way. As a matter of fact, he brought gold, silver, clothing. As if he could pay for this thing. And he went to the wrong place. But thankfully, God was orchestrating all of this. And God sent word, amen. Uh, the prophet sent word, send him over here. And so he took his entourage. The Bible says he went to Elijah's house, stopped his chariot and his caravan, his androids by the door, expecting the prophet to come out. The prophet simply sent the messenger and say, go bathe in the Jordan seven times and you shall be clean hallelujah that was a prescription go bathe in the Jordan seven times and you shall be made whole it seemed as if Naaman would run to the Jordan but he had expectation. He was a noble man. He felt that he should be accorded more dignity. He said, first of all, I thought the prophet would come out himself. Greeted me properly. Amen. And I thought that he would put his hand on the place. Hallelujah. And heal me. You know our presuppositions has a way of frustrating God's plan and purpose for our lives. He had expectations. And when the prophet didn't meet those, he was upset and was ready to go back home. As a matter of fact, he said, he said listen, we have better rivers than the Jordan in Syria. Why must I go bathe? And that was a word. Go bathe in the Jordan. But that was the prescription. Amen. That was God's directive. I think that's the problem today. Why we fail to get the results that we need. Because we often fail to follow God's prescription. Do I have an amen? God is clear about his prescription. I... I look at the definition of prescription and it says in the, in the Latin, a prescription is basically a recipe. You know when you look, you see Rx, the R basically stands for recipe. It's a recipe for health. It's a recipe for life. And a prescription often describes the medicine and it tells you the amount of time you should take it and the dosage this was clearly a prescription the medicine was the Jordan the frequency the time was seven times not one 
Not two, not three, not four. Don't you know sometimes we get prescriptions from the doctor and we figure out how much we should take? We decide we, we break them in half. Amen. We skip a dose. Amen. We play doctors oftentimes. And with God, we often skip doses when God said clearly, this is what you should do. Hallelujah. Seven times in the Jordan. Now, there's a prescription for you when you're going through financial difficulties. The prescription is give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. But I look at the little that I have and I decide I can't follow that prescription. I know better than God. I can't do it in those dosage. Amen. We reason just like Naaman. We reason that no, that, that, that doesn't seem reasonable. That doesn't seem right. Another prescription is forgive. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was Peter who went to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times? <laughs> You're talking about the dosage. Amen. How many times? Till seven times? No, Jesus gave him the right time. Seven times. Just keep on forgiving. Because if you forgive not men, their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father. The prescription for spiritual health is forgive. Huh. Here's another prescription. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. What things soever you would that men should do unto you, do ye also unto them. Amen. Do right even though they're doing wrong. Amen. That is a biblical prescription that we find difficult to follow at times. Here's another prescription. Be merciful. Blessed are the merciful, shall, for they shall obtain mercy. You want to obtain mercy? <laughs> the prescription is be merciful. Now, showing mercy means that the person doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Amen. But, but we want to look to see <laughs> if this one... Is deserving, but the whole idea, the dosage, the degree to which I receive mercy from God is dependent on me following God. Scripture. Another prescription, difficult one, to follow, to take, is bless them that curse you. Oh, I, I don't mean bless them out. I mean, really bless them that curse you and pray for them who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Those who call you everything but a child of God, bless them. Oh, difficult pill to swallow. But it is a prescription. Amen. For spiritual health, for spiritual healing. Yes, do good to them that despitefully use you and drag your name in the dust. Do good to them. Here's another prescription. If thy enemy hunger, feed him. Even if it's your husband that's treating you bad, cook his food. <laughs> Amen. Wash his clothes. Amen. If you're sleeping with the enemy, feed him. Take care of him. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. That's the way God worked it out 
That's the way God is not about your enemy. It's about you. God wants to do a work in you. And if you follow the prescription, God will work it out. God will turn it around. Oftentimes our situation is not solved because we fail to follow the prescription. Amen. His name is wonderful. Are you taking notes? Are you taking down your prescription? Amen. I need one right now. Amen. Uh, but God is for us. Amen. He's for us. He cares about us. He knows maladies. And these are healing. Let's go back to the sermon. Divine prescriptions. Bless you. We play doctor. Amen. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barn be full. Ardell Bashambach told a story about when he was a little boy. His parents taught him how to pay tithe. And he would get 10 cents. Parents said, uh, you have to give God a penny. He said, fine. Amen. Give God a penny. Got a dollar. Parents said, you have to give God 10 cents. Fine. Got $10. God says, you have to give God a dollar. But he said he got a job. And he got $500. And the mother said, no, you know you have to give God $50. He said, What? Now, while it's chump change, <laughs> it, it seemed okay. <laughs> Amen. But the whole idea is that if we want God to bless us, we have to follow the prescription. Honor God with your substance and with the first fruit <laughs> of your increase. Bring all the tithe. Oh, it's a prescription. The storehouse. You're financially embarrassed. You're financially sick. Bring the tithe. And he said, see if I will not open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. But Lord, the bills are calling. Bring the tithe to the storehouse. That's the prescription. Amen. Uh, life is always in a hurry. And one of the problems we have is the problems of patience. But God prescribed that we should wait on him. Don't you know we have a tendency to run in front of God? Don't you know we get in trouble like Saul who God said wait until Samuel comes and he could not wait. He said he forced himself and offered sacrifice. And then Samuel showed up and said what have you done? We have difficulty waiting on God. Someone that says he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And the prescription is wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. When you wait, God give you grace to wait. When you purpose to wait, God stands with you. Oh, it's the prescription. It's the prescription that we must follow. God's people has a tendency of not following God's prescription. And in the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22, the question was asked, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The problem was they failed to follow the prescription. There is! A bomb in Gilead, the song says. Amen. There is a bomb for the sin sick soul, but we must follow the prescription. We must do what God says. 
for God to do is work. There are many battles to fight, but we have to do it God's way. Amen. There are many areas of life to conquer, but we must do it God's way. Amen. The prescription for Joshua and for us is this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate in it day and night, for therein God will make your way prosperous and you will find good success. In other words, when you have the word of God in your heart and in your mind, it means you're willing to follow the prescription. You're walking in it day and night and success, health, healing, provision. You arrive at your appointed destination if we follow God's directive, God's prescription. So here was, here was Naaman. He says, listen, I, I, I'm going home. Uh, this is just a waste of time. Amen. He had expectations. That was not according to God's word and God's will. And so, thank God for people with sense. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> amen. It's good to have people who, who are there looking out for us when we're ready to make fools of ourselves. Amen. And so one of the servants says, listen, 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 master, listen, listen, listen. You're a general. You know what it is to give orders. You know what it is to take orders. Amen. And some orders... <laughs> Doesn't seem to make sense. But you as a general. You have the overall picture. And when you give an order. The soldier's job is not to figure out. Amen. Down the road. It's to do. Do, do your command. There are others who have certain orders. And they don't know the whole picture. He said listen. If he had told you to do a great thing. You certainly would have done it. He said why don't you just do this. This simple thing. Go dip in the Jordan. And thank God. His sins came back. And the Bible says he, he dipped in the Jordan one time. <laughs> he dipped in the Jordan two times. Hallelujah. He dipped in the Jordan three times. Four times. Five times. Oh, we're talking about following this prescription. We're talking about doing exactly what the doctor says. Uh, have you ever taken antibiotics? You have to take the course. The full course. And don't you know there are people who take medicine and they start feeling better and they stop? Don't you know when you do that, when you do that, the virus, whatever it is, somehow gets stronger. Because it didn't get a full dose. So, so it developed sometimes some resistance. Amen. You have to give it the full dose. Amen. When God says seven times, God means seven times. When God say forgive, God means forgive. When God said let it go, God means let it go. Seven times. Don't second guess God. He dipped seven times and the Bible says after the seventh time his skin was like that of a child. He followed the prescription to the letter and God did the work. L let me close here. I, I find it interesting that Jesus made reference to Naaman. You know that? Jesus made reference 
to Naaman in the fourth chapter of Luke as he inaugurated his ministry. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He read in the synagogue in Nazareth. For he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captive. He, he stated forth what his ministry was going to be about. And then he closed the book and said, today is this scripture fulfilled in your word. I am it. And they begin to question, is, is not this Joseph's son? Uh, don't, don't we know his parents? And then Jesus made mention. He said, you know, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. Amen. He told them that. He said, the day you'll come when you will say to me, physicians, heal yourself. Uh, little did they know that he was indeed a physician. And then he said this. He said, in the day of Elijah, there were many widows in Israel. But only one widow was Elijah sent to. There was famine in the land, broke, poor widow. No help, but was sent by God to this widow who wasn't an Israelite. Amen. And then he said, there were many lepers in Israel at the time of Elijah. Elisha, but none was healed. This is saying a lot. Many lepers, but none was healed except Naaman. I find it interesting that at the inauguration of his ministry, Jesus mentioned these two. And one thing that's noteworthy about this woman, this widow, is that when Elijah approached her, she had her last amount of flour to make bread, gathering a few sticks to make their last meal. And Elijah, Elijah says, I want you to get me some water and make me a meal. He said, well, sir, you, you, you know things are pretty bad here. This is just my last. We're going to make this and we're going to die. This is the last meal. This is the last supper. He says, all right, go ahead, do what you're doing, but make me one first. What I see here, as Jesus speaks about this, is a prescription. And the prescription is, put God first. Put God. First, when we put God first, God takes care of us. Do I have an amen? amen. Put God first. And then we see he mentioned Naaman. He was the only one that was healed. And what Naaman did clearly is that <laughs> Naaman... Follow the prescription. Go wash seven times. Here were people who claimed to be God's people but failed to embrace the word of God. Failed to listen to God's directive. And at the inauguration of his ministry when they were really ready to write him off. He said, listen, I'm here to fix your situation. I'm here to fix the maladies of humankind. Amen. I'm here to save your life. The woman was about to die. Naaman had a condition that nobody could heal. But he followed the prescription. Amen. Finally, Naaman wasn't healed. He was not healed. Because the nature of the condition 
was that he was unclean. Leprosy is connected to sin. And that uncleanness separates from God. Isolates us. Cuts us off. And Jesus came to deal with life and death issues. Deal with the sin problem. And what he wants us to do is to put him first. And to follow his prescription. If we follow the prescription, nothing is impossible. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's going to fulfill all of his promise. Don't give up on God. For he won't give up on you. Jesus talking about the woman and Naaman at his, the inauguration of his ministry. He's saying, I know what's going on everywhere. I know what's going on. He said, I was in charge of that. I know. My father gave the prescription. And so this morning, I want to encourage you. Whatever the condition is, whatever the ailment, whatever the issue, whatever the situation, take and follow God's prescription. And we begin by putting him first. Won't you stand with me? It's a message from a, a little bit ago, but it was a, a powerful message. Many powerful prescriptions the man of God shared with us. Amen? Amen. If you feel like you need a divine prescription, we want you to come to the altar. Let's pray together. We thank God for your flexibility. Bishop is not feeling well enough to preach, but we thank God that he's here. Amen. And we thank God that the power of God is here to give you your prescription today. Would you please come to the altar? Let's sing that song that Bishop suggested at the end. God is able to do just what he said. He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah to Jesus. We serve the able God. Come on, let's sing it again. God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise. Every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah to Jesus. No matter what you're going through, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Let's sing this part. Oh, 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 oh. to lift up your hearts, lift up your hands, lift up your voices to God. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, some of us are going through strange times. Oh God, difficult situations. God, seemingly no answer, seemingly no, no solution. But God, we're here in the house of God and we've not lost our faith. It might be down to a little bit, but Father, we take your prescription. God, we're waiting on you and we're giving mercy and we're going to forgive and we're going to, to 
do the full dosage of your uh, divine prescription. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you for this word in our hearing. God, it has cut against our flesh. You told us that we need to do good to those who despitefully use us. And God, it's not the word we wanted to hear, but it is the prescription that you've given to us. And we will take your medicine. God, you told us to forgive and forgive and forgive again. And we didn't like what we heard, but we will take your prescription. God, you told us to take a bath in your word. And we didn't like what we heard, but we will bathe in your word today. Wherewithal can a young man cleanse his way? But taking heed thereunto according to your word. We will take your prescription today, God. And Lord, we ask that your help, for, for you to help us, Father, for you to be with us, God. We take you at your word and we believe you, God. And we say this in Jesus' name, amen and amen again. And can we just praise the Lord for healing us and praise the Lord for hearing us and praise the Lord for wholeness and praise the Lord for answering our prayers. We thank you, Lord. We give you great glory and honor in this place. Oh, 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 oh.